Hi everyone, this is your first video in Unit 3, Section 3. This week, uh, and this section is all about congruence and triangle congruence specifically, and triangle congruence criteria. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a couple of notes and examples for you with corresponding parts, um, which will help us connect what we've been learning about, which is the transformations and the compositions of transformations to this idea of congruence and congruent triangles. So we're gonna start with this idea called CPCTC, okay, which uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about in this video, okay? So the main gist of what's happening in this section uh, is, is here with these, this idea of mapping and congruence. Okay, so mapping occurs when two triangles are congruent, and we're gonna mostly focus on triangles, but this works for any congruent shape, like squares, rectangles, parallelograms, hexagons, as long as they're congruent, this applies. But like I said, this section is more about triangles than anything else. So mapping occurs when two triangles are congruent. One triangle can be mapped, okay? Or uh, you can think of it as duplicated onto the other through a series of rigid motions. Okay, so remember those are the transformations that we've been talking about, the translations and reflections and rotations. Okay, so you can kind of see an example. It's blown up a little bit bigger on the left side of your screen where we have two triangles here, right, um, that I can take the original triangle, do a rotation, and then a translation to move the uh, and get this triangle that's dashed right here on top of this other triangle in red, right? So those two triangles are congruent because you can match up all of the parts, right? You have a little like reflection, rotation, uh, and translation going on there, okay? So those matching parts, those parts that match up, right? Uh, so like this, right? This point A matches with this point A here. This point B matches with this point B up here, right? And finally, this point C matches with this point C right here, okay? Um, which means, obviously, that this side, AB, matches up with this side, AB, right here, and so on and so forth for the rest of the sides in this triangle, okay? So those parts that match up are called corresponding parts, okay? So your definition for corresponding parts is the pairs of matching sides and matching angles identified when one figure is mapped to another, okay? What's neat about this, which you have written here on uh, on your notes is that if you know that two triangles are congruent or two shapes are congruent and you know the side lengths and angle measures in one triangle, then you don't have to measure the sides and uh, you don't have to measure all the sides and angles in the other triangle because they match up and they have to be congruent. So if you know all of the side lengths and all of the angle angle measurements in one triangle, then they would be congruent or equal in the other triangle, okay? So the big key like thing that you wanna take away from this video especially is this idea right here, that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's what CPCTC stands for, okay? So written out, it's corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, that's what it stands for. That means that the corresponding sides or the sides that match up are congruent to each other and the corresponding angles that match up, the angles that match up are congruent to each other. Okay, it's both, right? We write uh, and indicate this using something called a congruence statement, okay? A congruence statement looks like this. Okay, it's when you have one triangle is congruent to another triangle, okay? When we write congruent statements, we write them so that the parts that match up 
are in the exact same order, okay? Which you can kind of see on the diagram right here. So in this congruence statement, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle TDJ. So that means angle A matches up with angle T. Angle B matches up with angle D because they're both the second angles that were written there. Okay, and then angle C matches up with angle J because they're both the third angles in, or the third letters in the congruent statement, okay? So that's how all of your angles match up. The sides match up in the exact same way, okay? So for example, side AB is congruent, oops, hold on. Side AB is congruent to side TD. Okay, and then we have two others that we can match up. So side BC would match up with side DJ. Okay, and then my last one would be side AC would match up with side TJ. Okay. So if you are asked to list all of the corresponding angles and corresponding sides, this is how you would do that, okay? All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples here, okay? So here you have an example of two triangles. I didn't write you a congruence statement here, but you can kind of see which sides and angles are supposed to match up. You can almost see the reflection line, right? You take ABC, triangle ABC, and reflect it over this line in the middle, and it makes triangle DEF, okay? So if I was to fill this in here, I would say that angle B has to match up with angle E. So I would say angle B is congruent to angle E, right? Side FE matches up with side CB. Now I wanna make sure, it's very, very important that I write these in the correct order. So the correct order to write this would be FE is congruent to CB, okay? it would be incorrect to write it as BC, okay? That would be incorrect, okay? The reason that that's wrong is because if you actually match up the individual letters, F does not go with B, F goes with C, right? So you have to list them in the same order. Okay? This is another one of those instances where, especially when you're writing congruent statements that the order matters so that you can match up things correctly, okay? So I have last here, I have angle D. Well, that's gotta match up with angle A over here on the side, so angle A. And then AC is this down here. So AC has to match up with DF. Okay, again, I wanna make sure I'm going in the right order, okay? All right, so I would love for you all to give this a shot, okay? So you have one more that's very similar, right? This one's a little harder to match up because the triangles look the same um, from multiple different angles. So it's hard to tell which shapes are, not which shapes, which angles uh, and which letters are supposed to match up, okay? Remember that you have this congruent statement up here. Okay, so we want to match like first letter to first letter, second to second, and third to third. All right, so give that a try. I'm going to fill it in and then we'll see how you did. All right, folks, so you should have gotten the following answers angle B matches up with angle D, right, which you can see from the congruence statement. Angle T matches up with angle A which again, you can see from the congruence statement, okay? And then for the sides, you have JD goes with CB and BC goes with DJ. Now, if you noticed, right, these two 
right, are the exact same side, right? JD and DJ are the same side. It's this side, right? CB and BC are the same side. It's this side, okay? But this is just showing you, it goes to show you that order matters, right? Same side, different order. You have to make sure that the vertices of the triangles, the angles match up, okay? All right, so we've done this with figures. Let's give it a try with some actual numbers here, okay? Uh, and I am going to write this actually on uh, the left side of your screen, so it's a little easier for you to see. Hopefully, you should copy it over on the actual notes page like I have on the right side of the screen, okay? So what we have going on here Okay, is we are trying to figure out what these actual measurements are. So we have our congruence statement up at the top, and now we have some actual numbers that we can match. Okay, so this first one is asking me, what is the measure of angle C? Well, C in my congruence statement goes with J. So since J is 50 degrees, then C must also be 50 degrees. Okay. All right. So I'm actually going to fill that in, that C is 50 degrees. Now it's asking me what angle B is. Well, angle B goes with angle D, which I don't have, right? I don't have either of those. But there is one thing that I do know, which is that all angles in a, tr in a triangle, all three angles have to add up to 180 degrees. which I'm hoping that's something that you remember from middle school, that all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees altogether. So I have 70 degrees plus 50 degrees plus angle B, which is what I don't know, has to equal 180. So this is 120 plus angle B equals 180. So I'm gonna subtract 120 from both sides and I get the angle B is 60 degrees. Okay, so 60 degrees, right? That also means that angle D is 60 degrees, okay? All right, and then the side lengths are a little bit easier to match up here, okay? So we have TJ goes with AC, Okay, if you look up at the congruence statement up here. Okay, so since AC is 4.7, TJ must also be 4.7. If they give you a unit in the problem, you must give me a unit in the answer. That's very important. Okay, because otherwise the number has no meaning. Right? Uh, if you just tell me 4.7, I have no idea actually how long that is. Right. Okay, then the very last one on here is uh, AB. So AB matches up with TD, right? Since TD is 4.2, and that means AB must also be 4.2 centimeters. Okay. All right. So you have two others very similar to this on the side here. Uh, that you have to see if you can figure out. Now, there's one thing that I will mention about the second one here. So this one right here, okay? Um, you will have to use the Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out how long the longest side is, a y. So if you, I'm hoping you remember that from the beginning of the year when we did the distance formula, but that formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? Where this would be like side a, for example. Um, actually, um, I'm gonna run out of room if I draw it there. So like this would be side a, for example, this would be side b and this would be side C, because it is gonna ask you for uh, the length of KR in that one, all right? So use the knowledge that you have, okay? Um, you will probably have to use a couple of times that all angles in a triangle add up to 180, 
uh, to figure out some of these. So give those a try, and then I'll see you back here in just a moment to check your answers. All right, folks, so let's take a look at these other two here. I moved the screen around and zoomed in a little bit so that you could see what I did. So the angles were fairly easy to match up. So in this second one, angle K went with angle Y. Since angle uh, Y was 53.1 degrees, then that means K had to also be 53.1 degrees. Angle A went with angle R, and I didn't know either of those. But I do know that all angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so I added the 90 degree angle, right, this 90 degrees right here, because that's what that little square means, okay, plus 53.1, and I subtracted that from 180 and got 36.9. And I should have put a little degree symbol right there, forgot my degree symbol, okay? For the side lengths, AF went with RQ. Since RQ was four centimeters, AF had to also be four centimeters. Okay. And then KR went with YA. I didn't know either of those, but I do know that this is a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that missing side length is. So in this case, I'm doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I'm looking for c, right? The a value is 3 centimeters. The b value is 4 centimeters. So 3 squared plus 4 squared is 9 plus 16, which is 25. So 25 equals c squared. So then I need to take the square root of that number in order to cancel out the exponent. So I end up with c equals 5. So kr is 5 centimeters, okay? For this second one right here, you may have gotten a little bit stumped on one of the sides, uh, which is understandable, uh, and I'll explain why in a second, okay? So again, the angles were pretty easy to match up. J went with B. Since B is 79, J has to also be 79, okay? For J, C, K, I marked that and its corresponding angle B, K, C. In the diagram up there, I marked them with these little dash, uh, like angle curves there. Um, since they have the same number of curves, that means that they're congruent. That's how we mark that angles are congruent. Okay. Um, so I didn't know either of those. So again, I needed to add the two angles that I did know and subtract that, those from 180. Uh, and when I did that, I got 31 degrees. Okay, now, you probably got to this one, side BK, and thought, how do I do that? Oh, maybe not. Just kidding, y'all. I read my diagram incorrectly. Pardon me. Uh, so this actually is not right. I don't know why I wrote this this way. Well, actually, I do know why. It's because I matched my parts up incorrectly, which is my fault. So here, BK should go with JC, which I had backwards, right? Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, CJ was 7.3, or JC was 7.3 centimeters. So BK had to also be 7.3 centimeters, and then you have that other side um, that you were looking for. JK matched up with BC. BC was 6.6, .6, so JK was also 6.6, .6, all right? So give me just a sec to reset. I've got one more thing that I want to show you how we can actually take these transformations to show the mapping uh, that's happening, right? Uh, and then I've got some practice problems for you. All right, so give me just a moment. All right, folks. So uh, what I'm going to do in this last little bit of this video is show you how you can do these uh, transformations, compositions of transformations, and actually get these um, these triangles to map onto each other, okay? So I'm going to do this first example, and then I'm going to have you try another one, okay? So here, I'm starting with this triangle, DEC, 
right? Uh, and it's telling me that I'm doing two transformations. I definitely need to do a rotation, but if I just do a rotation, that won't quite move me far enough. So I also have to do a translation, okay? So I'm gonna do my rotation. I think I definitely need to rotate it this way. And I think I only need to do it 90 degrees, okay? So I'm going at 90 degrees. This is counterclockwise. So remember that's positive, right? So when I do that, point E is gonna end up right here. Point D is going to end up here. And then point C is gonna end up right here. Okay, so there's my first transformation, right? And then I have one more. So I'm rotating around the origin 90 degrees. And then I also am going to translate this. So it looks like I'm going to translate it one, two, three, four, five, six units to the right and one unit down. So six right. and one down, okay? And when I do that, we can see which points match on top of each other. So when I do, I end up with point C over here by point Y, point E over here by point G, and then point D over by point H, okay? So if I'm writing this, D goes with H, if I'm writing the triangle congruence statement, D goes with H, E goes with G, and C goes with Y. So that would be how I would write my triangle congruence statement, okay? All right, so there's one more on here. I, I want you to give that one a try, give it a go, and then come back and we'll check your answer. All right, y'all, so here is this last transformation example. So in looking at this, I originally thought maybe it's a rotation, uh, but then I tried the rotation and it didn't quite work out. Um, so my next thought was, let's try a reflection. So I flipped, did a reflection over the x-axis and got that lovely blue triangle there. And that looks a little bit more like what it's supposed to look like. Right, and so then I just had to do another translation, right? Another shift, a slide. Uh, and I ended up moving seven spaces to the left and two spaces down. So point O ended up matching with point T. Point L ended up matching with point, um, or yeah, point L ended up matching with point E. And point uh, D ended up matching with point F. Okay, so if I was to write this out, right, I would write, I did a uh, reflection first over the x-axis and then a translation to write my triangle congruence statement. So my triangle congruence statement would be triangle D O E matched up with triangle F T L and that's in the right order. All right, y'all. So that is it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to do a couple more practice problems that have a little bit of algebra, maybe a little bit different than some of these other ones. Um, just so you can get some exposure to different types of problems that deal with this idea of corresponding parts. All right. Key thing to remember here is that in triangles, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. As long as the shapes are the are congruent are the same shape then their parts will match up their corresponding parts will match up and they will be congruent okay so i will see you in the next video bye everybody